is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee of the minority leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, and still I rise, and still I rise, proud to be a person who is blessed with the preeminent privilege of standing here and speaking in this most sacred chamber. Proud to be a person who is in service to his country. Proud to acknowledge that we just in Houston, Texas, celebrated Juneteenth, the day that General Gordon Granger read General Order Number 3 in Galveston, Texas. General Order Number 3. General Order Number 3 was read in Galveston, Texas, to call to the attention of the people of the state of Texas that the Emancipation Proclamation had some two and a half years earlier freed the slaves in the Confederate States. Of course, the people in Texas did not honor the Emancipation Proclamation. Hence, people were maintained in slavery for some two and a half additional years. But General Gordon Granger didn't come to Galveston, Texas alone. General Gordon Granger came with the 25th Army Corps. The 25th Army Corps liberated Galveston, Texas. It was the 25th Army Corps that came to Galveston and ran the Confederates out of town, as it were. It is said that they were chased to the border of Mexico, which allowed General Gordon Granger to read General Order Number 3. But for the 25th Army Corps, General Gordon Granger may not have been in a position to read General Order Number 3 on June the 19th, because the 25th Army Corps came in about a week earlier the 25th Army Corps was more than 1,000 persons strong and consisted primarily of persons who were of African ancestry. It was African people who fought to liberate Galveston, Texas. Hence, we have Juneteenth. Much more that I could say about Juneteenth and General Order Number 3, as well as the 25th Army Corps. Uh, we have presented a resolution to honor the 25th Army Corps for their bravery, for their valor. Much more to be said about them. But today I want to move forward from Juneteenth. I'd like to acknowledge it as a celebration of liberation persons being liberated after having suffered the inhumanity associated with slavery. Liberated. I mention this Juneteenth date because we will soon commemorate August 20th. August 20th is Slavery Remembrance Day. Remember Juneteenth was a celebration of liberation. August 20th is a commemoration of the millions who were enslaved. I mention it now because as we move toward this date, I want persons to take note of it. It is an important date in American history. It's important because it was on August the 20th of 1619 that the White Lion, a ship with 20, it is said, 20 enslaved persons of African ancestry. They were introduced to the colonies, which would go on to become the United States of America, a part of the United States of America. And these 20 persons represent 
the genesis of slavery in the United States of America. This date should not be forgotten. This date should be commemorated. It was a seminal moment in time that has impacted every scintilla of time since that day, August 20th, 1619. We should remember this day and we should commemorate it because of the lives that were lost, the suffering that was had, the many persons who traversed the waters and the many who did not make it. We should remember it because of the persons who did make it and what they contributed to this country. They were the persons who made America the great country it is because they were the economic foundational mothers and fathers of the country. And as such, they deserve to be honored. They deserve to have their lives respected. They were not just throwaways. They were not people who came here to do harm. They were brought here, forced, to help, and they did for some 246 years. So we should commemorate this day, August the 20th, August 20th, and we should do so annually. The President of the United States of America has acknowledged August 20th, and I'm proud to say that the Honorable Elizabeth Warren has joined me in this effort to spread the word and assure the commemoration of August 20th as Slavery Remembrance Day. Uh, the President acknowledged it. This House of Representatives has acknowledged August 20th, 1619, as Slavery Remembrance Day. So I want to make sure that we are mindful of this day as it approaches, as we approach it. I want us to be mindful of it because I want us to set aside time, set aside time to have a commemoration event. This is important. I liken this commemoration event to Holocaust remembrance. I am one of those persons who has great reverence for Holocaust remembrance. When last we had an event here in the Capitol uh, for Holocaust remembrance, I was there. I was there the time before. I pray that I will be there next year and the many years after. I believe that the Holocaust was an event unlike any other in history. And we have to commemorate with a degree of solemnity the lives that were lost so as to not only appreciate what happened during the Holocaust, but also to assure ourselves that it will never happen again. It was a crime against humanity unlike any other. So I liken slavery remembrance to the Holocaust because it too was a crime against humanity unlike any other. And it too should be commemorated in a similar fashion. In a similar fashion. We should have solemnity for slavery remembrance, and we should also have for slavery remembrance events. People should take the time to commemorate the lives that were lost. Uh, just as we do for the Holocaust. We do this, and we should do it for both events. I stand here today to say to my country, let us give slavery remembrance the same respect that we accord Holocaust remembrance. Both of them, crimes against humanity, unlike each other, each unlike any, any other crimes. They are events that ought to be commemorated. 
My desire is to, coupled with uh, many others I might add who are joining me, to have an event to commemorate the lives that were lost. We want to, at that event, acknowledge certain things. Acknowledge that we believe this should be a holy day, not a holiday. Not a holiday. We're not asking the federal government to allow people to be off from work. Not asking the federal government to pay anyone uh, a special salary and allow them to be away from work. We're just asking that the people who respect the day, you respect the day, and if you have African ancestry, you respect yourself enough to commemorate August 20th. So it's not a holiday. It is a holy day. The distinction being we're not asking the government to recognize it as a holiday with some emolument to be accorded people who work for the government. We just want people to respect the more than 10 million lives that were sacrificed to make America great. Respect them. Give them the same respect we give others who have made sacrifice for this country. Others have sacrificed and they should be respected as well. We respect the military for the sacrifices made. I respect the military for the sacrifices made. I honor those who are willing to sacrifice, who join the military. Those who were a part of the American enslaved, they didn't join, they weren't recruited, they were forced. They ought to be respected, just as we respect the lives lost in the wars, we should respect the lives lost to slavery in this great country, made great because of those persons who were enslaved for some 246 years. Let's respect them. Do this on August the 20th. And let's respect them to the same extent that we have respected persons who were members of the Confederacy. Because, on, because in 19, the year 1956, 1956, the Congress of the United States of America presented a Congressional Gold Medal to the Confederate soldiers, a Congressional Gold Medal. I believe that we should accord a Congressional Gold Medal to the enslaved. To the enslaved. To the enslaved, a Congressional Gold Medal should be presented. If we can present a Congressional Gold Medal to the Confederate soldiers who were fighting to maintain slavery, surely we can con present a Congressional Gold Medal to those who were enslaved. I think we should do it. On August the 20th, we will talk about this Congressional Gold Medal and what we're doing to make this a reality, a Congressional Gold Medal for those who are enslaved. But we shouldn't stop there. The Congressional Gold Medal is something that they have, by their labor, unpaid labor, hasn't been, hasn't been properly addressed. But because of their labor, because of the sacrifice, born into slavery, lived in slavery, died in, as a slave, that's, that kind of sacrifice ought to be honored. I believe that we'll do this at some point across the length and breadth of the country, but that's not enough. I also believe that the President of the United States should award a Presidential Medal of Freedom to the enslaved. A Presidential Medal of Freedom. We've given Presidential Medals of Freedoms to many persons, and I am not in any way contending that we should should not have given them their congressional presidential medals of freedom. 
But I am saying that we have neglected the 10 million plus persons whose lives were sacrificed to make America great. We ought to give them a Presidential Medal of Freedom as well. August 20th, we will commemorate their lives with dignity and the solemnity. And we will, we will explain, explain what we have done in moving toward the Congressional Gold Medal as well as the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And finally, I believe that we who have suffered, we who have suffered, ought to be of assistance to each other in helping to commemorate the suffering. When I say we who have suffered, are suffered I'm talking about our ancestors having suffered. We ought, to, we ought to stand together. We ought to work together. When, when there is Holocaust remembrance, I believe people who have suffered as the descendants, the scions, if you will, of those who were enslaved, I think we ought to, we ought to do all that we can to be a party to Holocaust remembrance. And, and likewise, I believe that my Jewish brothers and sisters, I believe you ought to be a party to slavery remembrance. We, we have suffered. The suffering ought not be something that is simply another day to the day of recognition and then we go on. I believe that there is a certain amount of unity that suffering requires of people who have suffered. Because suffering can teach you what you can learn no other way. It really teaches you why it is so important to respect the lives of those who suffered. You suffer as a descendant. And I, I don't mean suffer in the same sense as your ancestors or our ancestors, but we, we still suffer. And we're going to suffer, but we ought to commemorate the lives lost. That, that helps greatly. So I'm inviting my friends all of all hues to be a party to the Slavery Remembrance Day event. We'll say more about it later, time and location. Inviting everyone with a special invitation to my friends who are descendants of the persons who suffered the Holocaust. Special invitation to those persons who are descendants of those who suffered the Trail of Tears. Special invitation to those who were interned, American citizens, interned because they were suspected, never proven to be antithetical to the best interests of the country, of Asian ancestry. Special invitation. Special invitation to the Latinos who have suffered in that there's land that was removed from Mexico, became a part of the United States. Many people lost their lives in battles associated with that conflict. Special invitation to you. Anyone and everyone, which probably would mean every person alive has some degree of ancestors who suffered in a similar sense. But they're all separate and they're all different. I respect all of the suffering. And I invite persons to come to the Slavery Remembrance Day. And let us now 
start the process of not only remembrance, but also making it special by awarding this Congressional Gold Medal and this Presidential Medal of Freedom. I am a scion of the enslaved persons. A scion, by the way, is a descendant. A scion of the enslaved persons whose lives were sacrificed to make America great. And as a scion, I respect all who have suffered the indignity and the injustice of having their, dis their ancestors suffer. I, I invite scions of all hues, of all stripes, to come together on Slavery Remembrance Day, August 20th. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I yield my time to my friend who is making his way. I won't start, <laughs> stop with my time until he, is, he has made it to the area as he is someone that I have great <laughs> respect for and would want him to make sh be, be assured that I respect his time. I yield to the speaker and to my friend. Thank you, the gentleman from Texas Shields. Under the speaker's announced policy of January 9th, 2023, the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Schweikert, is recognized.